fácil. Welcome back to the workshop, everyone. This is part four of our tube preamp pedal build. The final coat of paint is dry on the chassis and we're ready to start installing some components. Now at the end of the last video, I was trying to figure out how we were going to fit the input board inside the chassis. There's a very limited amount of space behind the turret strips and tube sockets. And we need to leave plenty of room for our speaker emulated board. I think the only way we could have fit the input board in there is on a printed circuit board. A proto board is just not compact enough. But it occurred to me that I already have some of these relay switching boards that I designed a while back for a pedal switching system that I was working on. Not only do these have the same buffer circuit that I was going to use, but they also have a smaller relay that draws a lot less current. Here's a shot of the small relay next to the one that I had planned to use. It's much smaller. These only consume about 28 milliamps instead of the 40 to 100 milliamps that the typical miniature relay consumes. So they won't cause any problems with our power supply. We will have to limit the supply voltage somewhat so that we don't burn up our coil, but because it doesn't need to be well regulated, we can just use a resistor and a 5.1 volt zener for that. It does mean that we'll have to add an additional transistor switch to this switching board because these were originally designed to be controlled with a separate flip-flop circuit board. But we should have room on our switching board to add another transistor. So the only thing that's missing is the MOSFET boost stage, which we can put on a separate circuit board and, and secure it to this board. Mounting this board is going to be a bit of a problem because of the length. So we'll have to mount this with the input and output jack on the side of the pedal instead of the back panel. Aesthetically, it's not ideal, but it may actually be more convenient to plug the guitar into the side of the pedal and then have the cable that's carrying the signal out to your power amp coming out right at the same spot. So now that the chassis is ready, let's start installing some components and then we can start working on the MOSFET boost stage.
Okay, so our boost board is done. Now we can start working on the power supply. Okay, so we've got both of these done. I am going to have to cut these down, and I've got like a mini table saw kind of thing that I built, uh, and I use that to cut my circuit boards down. makes it much easier. I have no idea how I'm going to mount this, the power supply board. I'm hoping that a brilliant idea comes to me that just works perfectly, but <laughs> I really don't know what's going to happen, so we'll have to see. I have no idea. I'm this... I guess my cutting wheel is a little worn down because it wasn't cutting all the way through the circuit boards, but it, it cut deeply enough that uh, I was able to snap these off pretty cleanly, so that's no big deal. Uh, and this now fits very nicely inside there. I don't have the, uh, 
the fuse holder's mounted, but um, I think it'll still be okay once I get that in there. And I still have no idea how I'm going to mount this. You can't... Here's the problem. In, if this was any other prototype and, and, you know, I was working with low voltage and I just needed a way to mount a circuit board so it would stay in place, i just use, you know, do something cheap like hot glue or double back uh, foam tape or something like that. But I can't do that when we've got, you know, over 200 volts um, going through that board. That's not the sort of thing that you want flopping around in there if, if something breaks loose. So, you know, it's got to be really secure. Not sure what I'll do, and you'll have to wait until the next video to see what my solution is to that, because that's the end of this one. Thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to hit subscribe, like it if you like it, and we'll see you in the next video.